hi welcome back or if you're just joining my name is Maya and welcome to my channel Cranley Place where I'm posting content on Hermes scarf style knot tutorials and more be sure to like share comment and subscribe to be notified of new videos which I'm publishing weekly and if you've been enjoying my videos please consider sponsoring a super thanks which will go directly towards production of more of the content that you've come to look forward to on my channel thanks in advance for your support this is one of the scarves that I covered earlier this year in my video series on Hermes's spring summer 2022 collection it was one I fell in love with right away and thankfully was able to get my hands on a preferred colorway several months ago now, but I'm finally getting around to doing this review. So in this video, I'll discuss a bit about the artist and his background and give my thoughts on this particular design. Let's get started. Hugo Bienvenu is a French illustrator, director, publisher and producer based in Paris who first started working with the house on a series of animations for their Instagram page, which if you follow it is an ever changing landscape of interesting content. No surprise there. I thought I'd share a few fun facts about Bienvenue. One, that he has a multinational upbringing, having grown up in Guatemala, Mexico, Chad and France. He is also a graduate from the École Gobelin in Paris, a globally renowned and top-ranked school of digital design, animation, and print. He also studied at CalArts, a visual and performing arts university in California, and he has created several graphic novels for young adults, notably Paiement, Accepté, and Préférence Système. If I may digress for just a moment about one of these graphic novels, I think you may find it insightful about this artist. Système Préférence, published I believe in 2019, is set in a dystopian future world where data has proliferated to the point that judges are ordering its daily destruction to gain space. But the archivist protagonist is faced with a choice to save or destroy Stanley Kubrick's 1968 epic sci-fi movie 2001 A Space Odyssey. And spoiler alert, he decides to secretly save the data in his domestic robot. Through this story, Bienvenue asks essential questions about collective memory and more importantly, what is collectively important and essential to all of us? And if parts or all of that are lost or erased for whatever reason, what's the consequence? And how does that recast our past, present, and future? Some have drawn comparisons, of course, to Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451, if you're familiar with that novel. But even if you ignore the literary themes here, what's clear is that this is an artist who thinks deeply about our roles in shaping not only culture, but our shared sense of being and identity. And bearing that in mind, I dare say you may look at his artwork through quite a new lens. Okay, so thanks for indulging me with sharing that bit of background about the artist. Let's take a look at WOW, the double-faced 90 centimeter carré introduced in the spring-summer 2020 season. That one never even made it to the U.S. website during the season. It was so popular. With the colorful side in French and the monochromatic one in English, it features the super heroine spotted by two golfers who wonder, who is she? She is the storm, youth and elegance, brashness and freedom, the thunder, fire, earth, wind, water, an Amazon, a Valkyrie. Wow! She is the Hermes woman. You can see traces of his sci-fi bent in her steed and dress, which is no surprise given his penchant for the genre. And of course, it hints at the future space derby scarf that would come next. I'm sure you'll also notice the Parisian landmarks as she adventures around the city. Notre Dame, La Conciergerie, the Grand Palais. And imagine what a different scene it would be if these historic landmarks had not been preserved through time. 
Notre Dame was started in 1163 and completed sometime in the 1300s. La Conciergerie also dates to the 1300s, and I know that the Grand Palais is relatively newer from the 1900s, but going back to that thought of cultural memory and preservation, just saying. Anyways, I should mention that even though this scarf was a bit challenging to find during its original season, it is still possible to get it in some colorways on at least some of the global websites even today. So if you missed it back then, you can seize the moment and grab it now. Drawing inspiration from mid-20th century American comic books, in this scarf, Space Derby, Bienvenu showcased a signature style with the sci-fi derby of six teams competing on a track amongst the planets and stars. In the lead is a futuristic superheroine, and on closer inspection of these daring racers, it looks like most of them might be women. At the time, it was also extended to some fashion jewelry, specifically in an enamel bracelet and a pendant that doubles as a pillbox. Now, I also found that there is an Hermes Arceau Space Derby watch, a very special timepiece featuring hand-painted illustrations inspired by the silk scarf of the same name. The Arceau watch, if you're interested, was created by Henri Dorgeny in 1978, and in this case, the face is updated with Bienvenue's colorful drawings. There's a 38mm pink opaline version diamond set in white gold with a rose alligator strap that was limited to 24 numbered pieces, and a 41mm adventurine version with a dark blue alligator strap that was limited to 12. And by the way, these timepieces were priced at approximately 73,000 US dollars a pop when they came out last year, which I guess is quite a bargain in the highly vaunted world of collectible watches. I'll take 10. I'm just kidding. It's much too rich for my blood. But scarves, on the other hand, are a different story. This design takes inspiration from carefree summer days and seaside holidays. Drawn in an American comic style, it tells the story of a crowd of tourists staying at a futuristic seaside resort. There's a superhero, reminiscent of the Hermes woman from the WOW double face design, flying over the town's rooftops where a crowd of daring teens has gathered. A space derby-esque horse race is taking place in the streets while people lounge poolside nearby and there's a mermaid taking refuge in the arms of a lifeguard. One of my personal favorites, though, is the life-size chessboard where the rooks look like inflatable tube guys and the bishops are in headstands, making me wonder how they even move. <laughs> Very Cirque du Soleil. Now, I started looking for this one shortly after the new year because I fell in love with the illustration, and fortunately I was able to get my hands on this colorway. So I appreciate your patience since it's taken me actually this long to do a video on it. But it is amazing in person. I know some people may find it too busy, but for me that was part of the attraction since it offers a lot of variation just based on how it's folded and tied. Those of you who've been following my channel know that I'm also a sucker for contrast hems, so that was icing on the cake. This colorway I chose is very different than anything else in my collection, which is one of the reasons why I was drawn to it in the first place. So what do I wear it with? This colorway is officially called Creme Menthol Ebene. The creme is obvious. Menthol is this minty green and Ebene a dark brown. But obviously you also see a golden sand color, a pale blue, a mustard orange, some grays, even a pale pink, meaning you have a lot of options depending on which colors you want to pick up or contrast with. Now, I will say that while there are a lot of colors in my wardrobe, I pick neutrals that I know will work well across my scarf collection. Yes, you heard that right. This wasn't always the case, especially when my collection was small, but really for several years now, anything I bring into my closet must work with as many scarves as possible. This scarf in particular, I've paired with black, of course, brown, gray, green, 
teal, tan, cream, white, and even that burnt orange. I have also worn it with denim, but frankly, I haven't met an Hermes scarf yet that doesn't look great with denim, so maybe that's a gimme. Here are a few examples of things I've worn it with, as well as others that I plan to when we get into cooler months. So there you have it, my thoughts on this lovely scarf from the Spring Summer 2022 collection by Hermes. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and let me know what you think in the comments. In future episodes, I'll share other scarf reviews, not tutorials, and more, so be sure to hit that subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks again for joining me today. Until next time!